the One was set to be Canada's first super tall skyscraper, towering at 328.4 meters, making it the tallest building in the country. Located at the heart of Toronto's Yon and Bloor intersection, it promised ultra luxury living, a five star Andaz hotel, and a massive retail space. But what should have been a groundkeeping project has turned into a massive construction challenge. Since breaking ground in 2017, the skyscraper has faced delays, financial struggles, and even a change in management. Once expected to be completed by 2022, it now sits unfinished, with at least $2 billion poured into its construction. Lenders lost trust, developers were removed, and costs spiraled out of control. But what led this ambitious dream to stumble? Toronto is quickly establishing itself as one of North America's most dynamic urban centers, with its population growing by nearly 1% annually. The demand for housing is at an all-time high. For years, however, restrictive zoning laws stifled the city's ability to expand its high-density housing options. So, what happened? Developers began looking upwards, and a wave of skyscrapers started reshaping the Toronto skyline. But this condo boom brought with it a host of challenges. Many of the new high-rise developments weren't designed for long-term living. Instead, they catered to investors, offering small units ideal for short-term rentals rather than family-friendly homes. As a result, the city saw an influx of empty condos or units cycling through short-term rental platforms, exacerbating the already strained housing supply. While the economic benefits of these towers were undeniable, this also contributed to a housing affordability crisis, making it harder for residents to secure stable homes. This is where the one comes in. Positioned at the iconic intersection of Yon and Bloor, one of Toronto's busiest and most prestigious corners, the one was meant to be a game changer. Standing at a towering 338 meters with 85 floors, the one would have been Canada's first super tall building when it broke ground in 2017. A combination of luxury residences, retail spaces, and a five-star Andaz Hotel. The One promised to not only transform Toronto's skyline, but also its real estate market. Unlike typical high-rises of the day, The One aimed to offer spacious living spaces, winter gardens, and breathtaking panoramic views of the city, setting a new standard for luxury. But The One wasn't just another skyscraper. It was conceived to be a landmark, a project meant to rival the world's most ambitious supertalls. Yet, bringing this bold vision to life has proven to be anything but straightforward. With construction delays, rising costs, and a volatile real estate market, The One has faced a series of setbacks that have left its future in question. But before diving into the specifics of the challenges this project has faced, let's first explore the construction details behind this remarkable engineering feat. From the very beginning, it presented a unique set of architectural and engineering challenges, designed by the renowned Foster & Partners and Core Architects. The structure features a groundbreaking hybrid exoskeleton, Eight massive exterior columns support the entire building, allowing for expansive open spaces inside, something unlike any other high-rise in Canada. But how do you support such a monumental design? Advanced engineering solutions were essential. Wind tunnel testing uncovered significant wind pressures, which pushed the team to incorporate reinforced materials and structural upgrades. 
To combat the tower's potential swaying, a 600-ton tuned mass damper, a giant pendulum, was added to the top. This clever addition reduced the building's movement by nearly 50%. But there's more to stabilizing a tower this tall. Diagonal braces were installed every six floors, further enhancing the structure's rigidity and ensuring it could withstand even the most powerful gusts. The One's design didn't stop at structural integrity. Unique cutaways in the mechanical floors were incorporated to mitigate wind pressure at street level, protecting pedestrians from hazardous gusts. Combined with the exoskeleton frame, these innovations set the One apart from traditional skyscrapers, offering both visual and structural advantages. So how do you build a tower this advanced without facing massive material and logistical hurdles. Overcoming these challenges was no small feat. The One's exterior cladding had to meet stringent North American standards, with extensive testing to ensure durability against extreme temperatures and environmental pressures. Manufactured in Germany, the aluminum and glass facade were designed not only to enhance insulation, but also to withstand intense winds, all while maintaining the building's sleek, elegant appearance. But even with these cutting-edge engineering solutions, the road to completion has been slow and frustrating. Originally set to open in 2022, the building was only 40 floors tall by late 2023. As of now, the one stands above 58 floors, with a projected completion date of at least 2027. With SkyGrid construction now on board, taking over from Mizrahi developments, there's hope that progress will speed up. However, with ongoing design modifications, including the recent addition of 88 new residential units, delays are likely to continue. So, what exactly caused these massive delays? The answer is clear, money. When the One project was first envisioned, it was supposed to cost around $1 billion. But by the time it entered receivership in 2023, the budget had ballooned to over $2 billion. How did a project with such grand plans end up in this financial mess? To kickstart the project, Major lenders invested hundreds of millions of dollars, but as costs continued to spiral out of control, repayments fell behind. In October 2023, lenders lost their trust in developer Mizrahi and pushed the project into receivership. Enter Alvarez and Marcel, who were brought in to stabilize the situation while Mizrahi was removed from his own development. But the troubles didn't stop there. Apple which had planned to occupy the ground floor pulled out due to ongoing delays. This left behind a massive retail space with no tenant in sight. In addition, 70 of the 416 planned residential units remained unsold, worsening the financial strain on the project. To attract buyers, developers proposed redesigning some units, increasing the total number to 503 units in hopes of generating more revenue. Meanwhile, legal disputes and rising interest rates created further financial challenges. Mizrahi's departure led to uncertainty, while contractors and suppliers scrambled to renegotiate terms. Additionally, key lenders set a minimum bid of $1.2 billion to sell the project, yet estimates suggested its actual value was significantly lower, making a sale difficult. So, what comes next for the One? The construction continues, but progress remains slow. SkyGrid Construction has now stepped in as the general contractor, and a new plan has been approved to add 88 more residential units, bringing the building's total to 503 units. This move is designed to boost the project's financial viability but it also means even more adjustments and delays. And there's another challenge, competition. Originally, 
The one was set to be Canada's first super tall building. But now, another project. Sky Tower at Pinnacle One has entered the race. What was once a 313 meter design has now been approved to rise over 340 meters. The One remains an ambitious and groundbreaking project, poised to redefine Toronto's skyline with its innovative design and structural engineering. Its unique hybrid exoskeleton, towering height, and luxury living spaces are set to make an iconic addition to the city once completed. So, what do you think? Will the One ever be completed, or will it face more delays? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications to stay updated on the latest. Thank you.